Talio there champs and welcome to the show. So today I'm going to answer some of the FAQs about the Dell XPS 15 9560 Kaby Lake model. Now I've still got a lot more videos to come on this XPS 15. I'm going to have performance versus the MacBook Pro and the old XPS 15 in that video too. I'm going to have some battery life tips, how to set it up, how to do the clean installs to get your XPS 15 optimized and running the best. And I actually do have upgrade videos on the last model XPS 15. I've updated the links in there so you can get the correct RAM and you can get my recommended SSDs. Check out those two videos, upgrading the SSD, upgrading the RAM. It works exactly the same on a 9560 Kaby Lake model. There is literally no difference. I will, however, be making updated, higher quality videos. So let's get on to the FAQs. I guess the question I get asked most often is does it have coil wine? Well, I've had multiple XPS 13s, XPS 15s and I've had no coil wine on any of the XPS 15s or 13s. Now someone was telling me go on the tour quiet room and then put your ear up to the keyboard. Well that's not coil wine. Most electronics have electrical noises. If you cannot hear it audibly from your sitting position then it doesn't have coil wine. Don't go into a quiet room and put your ear to the keyboard. I mean that's just not being fair to any manufacturer so I haven't had it and just on these issues don't be worried about buying it because what happens on the internet is you only hear the bad things on the internet and if you actually read the internet you would think well every single XPS 15 that comes out has coil wine it's far from the truth it'd be only a small minority and yes these are mass produced items but I can assure you and plenty of people have told me they haven't had coil wine with their Dell XPS 15 too so I won't worry about it. If you have a 14 day return policy with Dell check in your region if they have that policy too. If you're not happy with it return it. Now I also get asked about ghosting light bleed. Now pretty much every IPS or LED display panel has ghosting or light bleeds but again if you're not happy with it return it. It shouldn't be to a point where you can actually see if you go into a dark room and put a black screen on I don't care what laptop you get you're going to have some sort of light bleed if you have an IPS type or, or LCD panel but you shouldn't notice it in normal daily use and I have not had any noticeable light bleed on any XPS I've had 13 or 15 on the test I've done for both the 4k and the full HD screen on the last model the ghosting is not a really a big issue if you want a really fast refresh screen or a screen that doesn't ghost at all well you're gonna have to probably go a gaming laptop like the Alienware OLED or something like that or something with a really high refresh where you're not gonna see that ghosting I never see ghosting in any Dell XPS 13 or 15 in real world use ever never I can see it on the UFO test Test, like I see on any LCD screen but in real world never notice it now that leads on to should I get the full HD or the 4k well if you can afford to get the 4k it's just a better screen even if you don't need the 4k resolution you're getting that hundred percent Adobe RGB color gamut there it, it is a better screen you're getting you know over seven hours battery life now with the 4k screen so unless you really need like 10 hours battery or you're just a gamer or something like that i would definitely get the 4k screen if you can afford it there's nothing wrong with the full hd screen it's still a quality display but the 4k is another level above that i've had actually a couple of people should i get the i5 with the 4k or the i7 with the full hd now my answer will be if you're a video editor it's really hard decision because one, you'll probably want the 4K screen, but then again, you'll also want the i7 for the hyper-thread cores for when you're rendering. So, uh, so line ball that. I guess I can handle a little bit of extra rendering time to get that 4K screen. But if you're a gamer or something like that, maybe you can get the i7 and get the full HD, that's fine. But generally, I just recommend you get the one with the 4K screen with the big battery. The i5 is good bang for buck. So if you're a gamer, definitely the i5 is plenty fast enough. You're not gonna get any real big advantage out of getting the i7. So temperature and heat and noise. I mean, I covered that in my gaming review anyway. Yeah, it's, you're generally talking 75 mid 70s GPU and CPU I think I got 83 on the CPU once and and I think the GPU is topped out at about 80 degrees as well now I get asked this quite often too is the Thunderbolt a two times or four times well it's exactly the same as the last model so it's a two times now theoretically that sounds bad but trust me it's not as bad as you think I'll leave a chart up here 
on where to compare two times versus four times using the Thunderbolt 3 and you'll see that you're getting anywhere from 6 to 12 average about 8 to 10 percent difference between the two times and the four times thunderbolt 3 now thunderbolt 3 is a mess you have no idea what device is going to work with your system i actually nearly pulled a trigger on a thunderbolt 3 graphics amp but i didn't because you don't know if it's going to work with your device now dell are thinking about certifying certain thunderbolt accessories like external gpus whether they do or not at least they're looking into it i'll wait to see if they do if they certify a thunderbolt 3 graphics amplifier i'll definitely get that one if you get one that works properly there may be actually no difference we'll have to wait on seeing that also i get asked can you charge through that thunderbolt port yes you can charge through it you can charge the laptop i actually plugged the mac power supply into the thunderbolt 3 port and it was charging it was charging slowly you want to make sure someone else has tried it first because if you just buy a USB-C AC adapter you can't be guaranteed it'll work on any laptop with USB-C. Now I get asked this quite often and I'm actually going to test this out. If I put the 4K screen at 1080p will I get extra battery life? Well my instant reaction to that is no. I don't think that's how it works and I'm going to test that out so stay tuned should i do a fresh install i always do stay tuned for my fresh install and optimization videos i actually do have some older videos you might want to check those out on the last model they'll pretty much work the same now hidden partitions yes you lose about 11 gigabytes on your ssd and that's one of the reasons why i fresh install windows you can't see those partitions if you fresh install windows and delete those partitions when you do it you will get back 11 gigabytes on your ssd or hard drive depending on what model you have you can always download the windows image from dell and when you install that image i believe it does put the hidden partitions back some people have told me about they're getting different yields out of their battery meaning their full charge capacity is different from what it states the battery size is now i'll leave a bit of code here and you just paste it into command prompt it'll generate a battery report it'll tell you how much your battery holds at full charge now you're never going to get 100 percent yield i believe that within 10 percent is acceptable but if you don't have the full yield of what the battery capacity is like 97 watt hour if you actually drain your battery and i've been told that this stuff doesn't work anymore but it actually does if you actually drain your battery till it's flat and then charge again you'll get some extra charge capacity out of your battery. It seems to recalibrate it. And I have tested that on the XPS 15 I had. I drained it out and it was reporting an extra 4% battery at full charge. So yeah, you might want to check that out and definitely drain your battery if you're not happy with the yield you're getting on your battery there. This is a question I get like all the time. Not happy with the Apple, I'm not happy with the Mac. Should I get the XPS 15? Is this the right one? Yes, this is the right one to get. This is the best at the moment, 15 inch for your content creation and so on. Just have a look, MKBHD. He's given his MacBook Pro to flick. He had it attached to an external 5K monitor like all these Mac people say. It's got all these Thunderbolt Three ports you connect two 5k monitors and thunderbolt dasses and all this sort of stuff well turns out it's not even good for doing that because mkbhd has gone back to his old mac pro which he said is slow anyway he uses final cut he says the macbook pro is basically not cutting it i justine uses final cut pro as well she has a full spec macbook pro and she says it's so slow editing it's like lags and it's so frustrating to edit on it she's actually thinking of going to windows she's using final cut everybody tells me it's so fast there seems to be a lot of issues with the new macbook pro and this is coming from apple fans so if you want to go argue the point go argue it with them also you have the guy from snazzy lab saying he doesn't recommend the macbook pro it overheats when over 100 degrees and it was throttling and dave from geekanoids he's actually switched to a pc there's just so many people disappointed with the macbook pro if i say this stuff i just get called biased go argue with those people i'll leave links in the description where you can see the videos where they basically say the macbook pro is no good and you can check that out for yourself and go argue with them because i'm sick of arguing with all these apple fanboys that by and large are just ignorant they don't even have a macbook pro and they have no idea what they're talking about so anyway stay tuned for my future xps videos I'd like to really thank you guys for watching give me a thumbs up if this video was helpful and if you have any more faqs put them down there in the comments and until next time guys tally ho <laughs>